Hello everyone, um, welcome to NYC's Open Data class. Um, this is the 101 class, so it's probably the introduction, just so that we get around to needing what is open data and how it can be used for in our daily lives or in your professional careers or whatever. So my name is Aryan and I'm here with uh, Joseph. So Joseph's gonna take it from here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a bit about the next one. Data NYC is a civic organization dedicated to improve the lives of New Yorkers through civic engagement, open data, technology, and design. In 2008, we began as a meetup, and now we have over 5,000 members. At our website, data.nyc, you can find class materials, a data portal, events, Facebook group, monthly newsletter, reports, and, and videos. So Beta NYC has been on, on a journey of civic technology and community or, organizing. And, and as I said before, we started as a meetup about people to talk about open data and open government. In 2012, Beta NYC helped to usher in the open data law. In 2013, the People's Roadmap to roadmap to, to a digital NYC, helping, and also helping to propose several laws. In 2014, Manhattan Borough President's Office started the Civic and Innovation Fellowship Program. And in 2015, Beta NYC was invited to run the Civic Innovation Fellowship. In 2016, we created the tool called the tool called Borsat, which which Ariane will explain to you guys later. And in 2017, we created tools like Boundaries Map, SLAM, a Tennis Map, AJHV Dashboard. In 2018, we created Radar, a research and data request. In 2019, we did a demographic analysis of community boards. In 2020, we began doing the virtual fellowship, of which this year we're doing round two. Okay. So what do we do? We have three main buckets of talent and procure pipeline where our civic innovation fellowship exposes CUNY students uh, like myself in, to employment as a public servant to equip them with digital era analog skills and give them an inside view of the government. And also our research and tools where our human centered research provides in-depth assessment of local needs. We build digital tools and promote agile processes that make it easier for government workers to do the work. Then there's public engagement. Our trainings, public events, and programs provide critical space for demystifying civic infrastructure and digital expertise and directly supporting emerging needs in a digital civic society. So here's a quote. The fight is never about groups or lives. It's always about people. So our goal is to help the people connect and empower themselves. Together, we can make the city a safer, more resilient, more efficient, and smarter. We want all New Yorkers to be connected to 21st century opportunities. So now I'm going to switch over to Ari. Great. I'm just briefly given an idea about the NYC government, the history, and open data. So why this is important, that's mainly what I'm going to go over quickly. So when you're talking about the NYC government, it's actually a huge, it's a very staggering, overwhelming. So just think about, if you just think about, here are some statistics. 1.3 million people live under or below, live it below the federal poverty level. 1.1 million people kids in New York's city schools. If it was a, just a city, just the students were a city, it would be the 10th largest in America. Half a million people live in public housing. That's the size of Atlanta living in just public housing. 700,000 people come in and out of the Grand Central Station. That's more than Boston coming in and out of one tra train station. And there are 18,000 miles of pavement and so that's enough to go from here to Hawaii come back, go back, and cross back to the Pacific and end up in San Francisco. So that's how staggering New York City is. So knowing about it is quite important. This is basically the structure of our municipal government. So we start off with the mayor, who is basically like the, who decides the city's agenda and appoints the heads of agencies. And then we have public advocates who represent consumers of city services. We have the comptroller who advises the other leaders of the city government on the city's finances. We have the borough president, of course, who helps to prepare budgets, propose priorities and plans for the borough. And of course, we have the community boards, which advises government officials and agencies on matters of their own district. And along with all these people, we, all, we have the district attorney who are basically lawyers and prosecutors. As you can see, there are 50 plus agencies. So that shows you the scale of uh, New York City in governance. So... In 2010, the Manhattan Borough President, uh, Gail Brewer, introduced the country's first municipal open data law when she was a city council member. So this legislation is actually made up of several interlocking laws that gives it its weight. And I believe it's the first in, U in, the, in the US to have an open data law of this scale. So the former mayor in 2012, Bloomberg, signed the local law 11 of 2012, more commonly known as the open data law, 
which uh, amends the New York City Administration Code to mandate that all public data be available on a single web portal by the end of 2018. So in November 2015, January 2016, and December 2017, Mayor de Blasio approved several amendments to the open data law. So these laws, which include stronger requirements on data dictionaries and data retention, response timelines for public requests, and an extension of the open data, helps to make makes, makes it easier for New Yorkers to access city data online and anchor the city's transparency initiatives around open data. So the open data team consists of the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, MODA, the Department of Information Technology uh, and Telecommunications, DOITT, and is responsible for carrying out these laws. So NYC's open data program is administered by two city agencies, the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics and the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. So they work with a requirement of around 100 open data coordinators staff at city agencies, offices, and commissions who are responsible for identifying, structuring, documenting, and sharing NYC's open. So as a result of all these, we have over 3,000 data sets, including 300 just published last year. And they cover almost every facet of city life. And more than 1.5 people have visited the open data as of 2020. And more than half of them are coming from NYC. And the rest is from the US and the rest of the world. So we're making progress, basically. So Joseph's going to cover this. Okay. Every year, New York City celebrates the Open Data Law with a birthday party to correspond with the New York City School of Data. The New York City School of Data is a community-driven uh, conference with a focus on open data, civic technology, and design. It's organized by Beta NYC and in partnership with New York City's Open Data team. So data is a, is a cornerstone of this digital century. We cannot speak about government, society, or nor technology while discussing the ramifications of how data is used to manage, maintain, surveil, and legislate. So ultimately, we empower the attendants to improve their lives and neighborhoods through workshops, panels, demos, and networking. So why is open data important? You know, we can make government more transparent, accountable, and voice for improvement. It helps the community advocate for change with evidence and for good, to make a good policy, we need good data. Next. Yes, here's a people's data set called NYC. It's a data set that you can access 20, 20, like in time, 24 hours a day, five days a year. You can access, you can access it online uh, through, through social media, through a call or on your phone. And it's available in 175 languages. Yeah, over 175 languages. And it, has, it provides access to 172 and 3,600 government servers. I posted a picture of my phone app version of uh, day one on the uh, right. Can you go back a bit? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so there are things like noise, heat or hot water, rat or mouse conditions, abandoned vehicle, and blocked driveway, illegal parking. On the left, I, I posted a picture of the complaint or a request I made to do one. There's a pothole I found across the street. Okay, so next. Uh, oh, yeah, your turn. So basically, board staff is going to be the first tool you're going to look at right now. And it was designed with community boards for community boards. So it's basically a very interactive tool for community boards that empowers users see trends and issues within their district's boundaries. So basically you get to make the, you get to view um, data in a multi-page dashboard so that you can sort, filter, and analyze data for each NYC borough and community district. And data is updated night directly from the city's open data portal. And it covers almost everything that you can think of. It covers everything from public sanitation to um, roads to even something um, interesting, let's say the squirrel population in Manhattan. So the board set is basically a 311 dashboard, which was customized for each community board built with and for Manhattan community boards. So we built it in 2017 at the office of the Manhattan Borough President, Gayle Brewer. So this is how you get to board stat. So there's a website for that. It's called .nyc. To start off, you'll need to give it information about which borough you want to look at. So we're going to go with Brooklyn this time. So this is the image that you first get when you click Brooklyn. So you get to find out that there's a lot of things. And we're going to basically brief about different ways we can filter to find out exactly what we need to know. For example, in this case, let's filter to community board four of Brooklyn. So here we're going to see how we can discover the top complaint types, descriptors, and addresses. So 
you basically, you can customize to a date range. So you can look at, for example, a particular period of time, or you can see, uh, notice your top address. You can see that certain addresses usually have more complaints, maybe because their living standards are, may not be that satisfactory. If you look up at the address and pull up its entire history of 311 service requests, you can see that you can see that the service requests basically come in with a variety of information. So it starts off with the unique key, create a date, the incident address, the complaint type, the descriptor agency, and the resolution descriptor. So it's quite important to see that we can basically make a lot of analysis regarding basically regarding every aspect of, of the quality of life in a community. So in this case, we have chosen a particular group of streets. So we're going to explore uh, your district's service requests through a map, which can be done by clicking on the map area. And we can look at a range of variables at the top. So this view will help you locate hotspots or service request clusters for specific issues. So for example, in this case, we have given it information about certain uh, characteristics, and we can find out exactly how the situation is in a broad range of community, in that community board, in a broad range of areas. So basically all that you need to do is you put in the a date range, you plug in a, a popular complaint in your community board, and then click the show the geographic clusters. So you can see that there is areas where there's a lot of pepper dots, which suggests that those are areas where complaints have. And I have highlighted three different cases. So there is the fire hydrant, which is shown in purple. There is the block sidewalks around that street, which is shown in yellow. And we can basically view this for each from a particular day to another too. So that's really convenient. So in this case, we have the apartments, about issues which people are having with apartments, apartment heating specifically. So we're going to look at the apartments in apartments heat for in red, the entire building in gray and heat plant in the light green. So you can basically see how we can categorize information, give it a broad range, and then look at specific issues within that. Another aspect which we can do is we can look at the average time needed to close a ticket. So you can see that for these specific cases, it's 5.7 days. It really depends. And this also allows us to see how the overall time is to close in a district. And sometimes different districts have a huge difference in their average time to close districts, to close tickets. So this page basically shows us a distribution of agencies and their service request ticket status. So the final aspect is we can also see how, how the COVID related complaints were in 2020, just so that you get an idea of a new descriptor. So social distancing is a new descriptor under the complaint type non-emergency police. And we have chosen three different factors. So there's purple, which says non-emergency police matter, social distancing. There is lime, which is non-compliance with phased reopening. Can you guess what is red? Can you guess what is brown? And it speaks in June, July, as you can see. You guys can drop it in the chat, probably. Okay. So uh, the brown basically shows the fireworks, which were particularly high during the summer last year. So as you can see, if you go back to the data, it's peaked in June, July, and then it's subsided around the rest of the year. So we get to understand how data can vary across an year. For example, certain complaints might be high at certain periods of time while low during the rest of the year. So this is something very interesting which you can do with, uh, with BoardStat. So we'll give you guys a couple of minutes just in case you have any questions. And then we're going to look at something very interesting. Feel free to let any questions through on the chat. We'll answer them. Okay, so Joseph's going to take it from here. So does anyone want to see the source of the, of the data? It's a place where we can find thousands of other data sets as well. And next slide. NYC Open Data was brought online in 2012 with the passage of Open Data Law. Okay, next. You can, you can find the site, the tool, by Googling NYC Open Data Portal. And here's a homepage. You can sign in by clicking on at the top right. Here's a sign-in page. You just type in your email and password. We, we recommend that you sign in. It's useful for saving data sets and being part of the part of the NRC open data community. So let's search let's for some data. We we'll go 311 into the search box here. And after clicking enter, we get 34 results on here. Right now, I think it's actually not at, not at the top, but you find 311 service requests from 2010 to 2000. So there's the data set next, next to it, uh, not their lens. That brings, brings you to something else. Okay. So this is the about page where you can find some information about the data itself, like 
Last time it was updated, I said February 24th, but that's just a date when I took the screenshot. It's just a uh, March 12th now. And the number of views, which at that point was on the 24th, was 422,000. The update frequency, which is daily, and also a data dictionary where it gives you some information about some the data. Next slide. Uh, this is uh, what appears after you like uh, view data. Now you can see here that the this is entire pretty much the entire a glimpse of the entire data set, which has 25 mil, mil over 25 million rows here. So does anyone can anyone tell what each row is? And some small font in the screenshot. Okay, so each each row is a uh, a quest. So yeah, you can tell how many complaints there were from 2010 until now. This is an agency here, which you see a bunch of them, Department of Transportation, New York Police Department, and some others, and a, a complaint type, like street condition, noise residential. And so more complaint types here, uh, some of the top complaint types in high condition, door and window, electric problems, a lot of noise problems. There's also animal abuse in abandoned vehicles. Next slide. Now we'll show you how to filter the data. Before we had like 25 million rows. Honestly, that's like way too many. Filter it by telling Telling, telling what exactly what we want. So for now, I want to search for only data in Community Board 02 of Brooklyn. And so I type, I, I changed the filter here to Community Board and is, and then type in 02 Brooklyn. When you type in your query, so make sure you don't have any extra spaces behind your, after you finish typing what you're looking for. Uh, at least you don't have to worry about uh, it being case sensitive. I tried it. Okay, okay. here we're in search for all the 300, 311, 301 calls made in Brooklyn Community Board 2 after February 14th, Valentine's Day, and assigned to the Department of uh, Transportation. So I added a create date is after 04th, 02, 14th, to appear on the filter. And also at the agency is DOT, Department of Transportation here. So that cut down the number of results to number of roles to 2,652. And you also see that of the for Department of Transportation, the complaints that I sent to them are usually about street condition, sidewalk, traffic sign condition, broken parking meter, and yeah, things like that. We also see a create date uh, for the request and a close date. So here I have another question. How many social distancing complaints can we board for this? I use a if between the option here in the filter. Create date is between the 1st of April to 30th of, of April. And it loaded them out to 427 rows. Oh, also, I changed the descriptor, added to the filter, a uh, descriptor, and typed in social distancing. So you can see all the distancing and the data there. But for January 2021, it's actually zero results. Can anyone tell why? It was related to the last slide. I uh, don't know if anyone still remember what it looks like. But I think it should be because before uh, the pandemic uh, in the US, there were social distancing, distancing when it really wasn't much, much of an issue. So there wouldn't be many people Sending requests about it. So then come yeah, during January. Does anyone have any questions about if you want data on uh, open data platform? Can we talk? Uh, I hear someone talking. The voice is a bit uh, low. Can you type it into the chat? What's the importance of signing in if at all in terms of seeing data from open data? Is login even important? You can still see a data without uh, logging in. It's just that uh, you also modify the you also save the modified versions of the data sets that you save and pub publish them. Let's see. Complaints about liquor license options are available. I'm not sure. Should we check it out? Oh, then I'll just uh, see if I can share the screen right now. I'll just stop other, other screen sharing. Uh, Arna, do you mind? Do you think we can do that at the end or do you want to do that right now? I think we can do that right now, right? Yeah, we, after this, we're only, uh, only going to mention some resources. So, yeah, let's do it. Sharing, you can take over. Oh, let's see. We have one open data. Here's a site. So, we're searching for information about liquor licenses. Let's see if I can find anything like where the results. Actually, I think there was another site that spoke about liquor licenses. Uh, what was it? I think we do that a couple of slides in. Yeah, a couple of slides later. I'm trying to go to it, but share a screen. If, let me try. This is a, I guess a little bit of preview. Ariane, do you remember which one it was? It's Lam. Oh, Gabriel. Oh, that was it. Yeah. How to get there. But a mapper. It's fine. Yeah, so it brings up a map to uh, give some information about uh, liquor licenses. There's a filter in here on the left. State liquor authority licenses. Let's see what's the let's see what's the question again? Oh, the chat. How do, how do I open this thing up again? Yeah, sorry about this. Oh, there is more. Yeah, complaints about liquor like supplements. Yeah, this is actually complaints about it, but it does show you, tell you whether businesses liquor license has been inspired or not. You can turn on if you turn on the three one one complaints on the left side. 
we should get the complaints yeah. on the food. Yep. Or the, the one below it. Yep. The one below it oh, too. Nice yep. drinking. It might take a little while to load a lot of data. So you can start to see how those large stacks of blue chips are indicating places that have been complained about a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Emily. Complaints by, it shows complaints by year here. Loud music and party. Oh, you want complaints? Trying to look for, trying to see if there's any about liquor. I guess noise does relate to liquor, but can this data liquor license be downloaded as well? Can it? Actually, I haven't played with the site that much after that. I guess that's uh, pretty much all I know about it. I think we can continue on. Can you guys see my screen again? Uh, yes. Okay. Some questions about Open Data Platform. Thank you, Zachary. I don't know what the M stands for Mapper, but what does FLA stand for again? Was this my slide? So do you want to learn more? Do you want to teach others this class? If so I sign up to be part of NYC Open Data Basketball Program. Okay, so you can request a data set or ask NYC Open Data a question. Uh, you can just send up a note. So just write your name, email, and how we can help you. So if you're interested in analyzing, in getting some data analysis done, we will probably be able to help you in that. You also have the ability to submit a radar. So that's a research and data and assistance request. So if there's something that you need help with regarding any sort of data pertaining to the city, we'll be able to help you with that in terms of creating reports or maps or anything of that sort. And you can also help each other to share your own work. So something very interesting is you can share, see each other's work. And once you're done with analysis, you can save that up. So for example, there are lots of tools available like this boundaries map, the crash mapper, and such kind of tools will be able to help you in finding specific data without having to scour a lot of lot through the uh, 311 sets. And many of them have graphical interfaces. Many of them have good maps. So you get a geographic sense of it as well. Joseph, do you want to cover this? Oh, sure. This website has my driving the NYC. You can type in the vehicle flight number or, and it should be able to value the, like the history of violations. I actually haven't tried it myself because I don't have a car, but you can go ahead and try. And this uh, just fix it NYC. It's actually a site where you can go if you have any problems with your landlord or if you're actually facing eviction, she will provide some help. And sidewalks with that NYC, it shows you show the relationship between uh, sidewalk width and like for this here, it says that sidewalk walk length is 12.4 feet and social distancing is somewhat difficult there. Okay. Oh, so this is might be a bit, bit late to mention this. Just recommending you that you attend the Open Festival every March. Lots of events, but yeah, there's still, still a good number left. Go on this March for today, tomorrow, and the day after. And here, there's a link to the people at the NYC Open Data 2020 report. What's the list of all these links for these specific, specific sites? I was just uh, showing some resources that you might find interesting or useful or helpful. Yeah, it has things like uh, strategic, strategic plans to yeah, mention things like our plans to improve user streaming the capacity or build communities or also highlights programs like uh, program highlights, like uh, data highlights or civic engagement highlights. Also uh, tells a, a bit about the, how the year has been in open data. Here's a one pager for digital data and digital resources. The link is on the left. Maybe you should, oh yeah, someone, Emily already posted it there on in the chat. And if you have any questions, Questions, you can send email to ODA at and you can also find the tool that uh, slash products. That was a, a slide, right? So does anyone have any questions? We still have another 12 minutes. When should we when should we request data through open data? And when should we request data through a pull request? By pull re request, you mean Zachary, would you like to answer yeah. that? I'm, I'm happy to take that one. So you can certainly file a oil request for open data and you will receive a response. To, but through the link I shared earlier to ask questions or receive a training, you could actually request the data set through that as well. And that goes directly to our team at New York City Open Data. And we are, uh, there's a law about required responses that are made public. It's a, a faster, just more direct way to request a data set. There's actually a data set of those requests if you want to see what other people requested. So I just shared the link again i'll share a link to the data set as well thank you zachary so we have 11 minutes left if no one wants if no one has any more questions uh, does anyone want to see a demo or of a uh, borsat or uh, open data uh, platform so a demo okay. does anyone have any requests hopefully something that will be easy to find no requests yet in light of the fact that it's getting a little warmer why don't you uh, look up something simple like park noise choose your community we can demo that you mean like three one yes 
So right now, um, do you want the data set is actually all the way down here? I'll use contains here. I'm not sure if we, no, actually that's our part, my mistake. It should be descriptive then, right? Parking. Yeah, I'll make the complaint type uh, no noise and probably it's still too large. Let me try uh, lowering the number of board and then I do filter condition and type contains descriptor, contains park. Remove uncheck descriptor, run it, and then look on the table for the complaint type for noise. Scroll over to complaint type. Uh, and now noise. you can see how a noise is being recorded. So we have noise dash vehicle, residential, etc. So now you can go back to where you have uh, noise checked and you can put noise dash park. There you go. So at least in zero one, we have 498 complaints about that. Let's, let's try visualizing it. That's one, isn't it? And if we can just jump in uh, for a second, Joseph, I know someone had asked why would you bother signing in? If you typically, if you're an individual who typically deals with, let's say, noise data or one specific complaint type or a few specific complaint types over the others, or it's, uh, or you're doing a search that you may want to reference a few times over the course of some type of time frame. It's good to, to sign in. That way you can save your previous searches so that you don't necessarily have to go through the motion of filtering again. And it's a good way to use as a reference. And you can also publish the data, to publish your sets to the Open Data website and others can access that as well. But it's very helpful if you're going to be using this continuously so that it's easier to reference. You don't have to go through the motions every time you need you need to get an answer. Thank you. There's a question from COVID data we shared earlier, also came from FC Open Data. That should come from the 301 request, right? Another new message. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, so we took my time for today. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you guys.